I would love to get started with um, how we all know each other. So let me back shift real quick. So um, I'm Jess, and I'm on staff at Westside Community Church, and um, these are a couple of my really great friends and sisters that I've known for forever. Um, this is Melissa. Melissa um, is our pastor's wife, and she, I keep looking at the camera and I'll stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but our pastor's wife, and when I started coming to Westside, I was in my early 20s, I yeah. think, and Melissa was very much a mentor to me and an encouragement to me um, when I was going through a really rough time. And I know that that's the case with Irene, too. And yeah. <laughs> Irene, I forget how long you've been coming to Westside. Um, 18 years. 18 years, 18 yes. Years. Yeah. 18 years. So, and uh, um, for me, like my um, draw to come to Westside was that I was a single mom and was very broken and young and I was trying to learn how to become a better mom for my daughter and how to become a, like a daughter of Jesus, how to follow Jesus. And, um, and it was a really rough time, but mm -hmm. I found a lot of great encouragement from the examples of the people around me mm -hmm. regularly and from the people who invested in me regularly, so. Well, I think you made yourself like available, like you wanted community. Mm -hmm. You were searching for community. Mm -hmm. So when you got here, you were looking. And I think sometimes people aren't looking yeah. for community. Like they'll, they, oh, I need to get plugged in or I need to connect. I know I should, but I, they just tiptoe. And I think a lot of times, like, I think both of you guys just kind of were like, jumped in because you knew the importance of being in community mm -hmm. and it was terrifying but yeah <laughs> no, well yeah I because you're an introvert <laughs> i am I, and i was a shy introvert at that yes, point in time so i much. did kind of tiptoe but melissa has is an extrovert and she has the ability to pull <laughs> <laughs> people collect her right yeah people um, collect her. yeah but i mean at the same time though you had a little girl mm -hmm. and you were like figuring out okay how do i parent this little one Mm -hmm. You found some connections and then, but it's funny because now I think people might see you and think you're more of an extrovert because of your role and what you do. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, she needs like quiet time. Leave her alone. Like <laughs> hours of quiet yes. time every day. It's ridiculous. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning so that I can be like quiet. Gabe does too. I understand that move. <laughs> I know you're getting better. I am. Years. You're getting yeah. better over the years. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not as shy, but no. But you're right. You have to be intentional about. You do, about and you have to, and like even with the shyness, I think you've found more purpose, mm -hmm. and so you're finding yourself more, and you've come to this place where you see your gifting and how you can utilize it. Yeah. And so you're not being held back by insecurity or shyness anymore. It's kind of like, I mean, to some extent, not you're all much. a little insecure, <laughs> but you're more like God's equipped me, and yeah. so I'm gonna step out, and that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there, the, I think it's funny that you mentioned that, that there are uh, calculated steps that you can take to, mm -hmm. to break through those things. Like, I joined the hospitality team yeah. when I was terrified because all I had to do was <laughs> smile and say hi and say, glad you're here. Like, it was scripted. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there are calculated things that you can. It's so funny that you say that because, like, I know, like, when we're at a class or something, we'll be like, hey, join the hospitality team. And people are always like, oh, I'm not an extrovert. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, no. you literally just say hi. Like, you don't yeah. have to be afraid. <laughs> like, if no. you can make somebody smile back at you, then you won. That's yeah. all that it takes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Anyways, it's good to pull you out. <laughs> totally. Um, I wanted to uh, get you guys together because I know that we've got some really cool stuff coming up and uh, like an amazing opportunity for us to, mm -hmm. to um, engage with each other, to share our stories with a bunch of ladies and to create space for other people to come together and, and um, meet other women and get connected. Yeah. And um, I lo I'd love to go back, like way, way back for you guys mm -hmm. and um, hear you guys talk a little bit about how you first met mm -hmm. and um, and how all of this stuff up until now was kind of like what, what the con conception behind it was, you know, for those yeah. these ladies mm -hmm. events and stuff. So yeah, I'd love it if you just yeah. share a little um, bit. As for me, I think as you said for Jessica, you know, she was broken and she was just looking for the community. Mine was the same thing, you know, um, of course I came in here due to certain incident. Uh, we'll say that at the event. Um, so, you know, I came here and for me, I had to do some work. So the, the office staff, you know, like Rachel, Melissa, Gabe, I think you were there in the beginning, I'm not sure. 
but I knew there was a handful at Sandy Mike. Um, mm -hmm. My journey started like um, just the way they treated me because I did come to church. I was the bench warmer, mm -hmm. you know, so that's how I knew Melissa, you know. So just hanging out with them and just doing the work, um, just everything, it just showed me the love. And that's what walked me through the, to be a Christian, you know, it's like the people makes the church kind of thing. And um, not everyone knows that I am a, I come from a very strong Hindu background. Mm -hmm. So it was not that I've been to church before or anything like that, you know, I was, but just knew what Hindu, um, you know, the temple and all those things. So just the people. And then once my journey took me to the front row <laughs> as you can tell I always sit in the front row or second you know that is my place I think now. it's because we have ADHD though and we don't like to be in the back because we get too distracted <laughs> yes. that's no, kind of more the reason that's what I tell people that I cannot sit in the back because I'm I like yeah keep like, people watching yes. <laughs> I can't do it <laughs> Jessica sits in the back <laughs> yeah. she's uh, only because anymore. of my husband I'd be in the very front <laughs> no, row you're usually like yeah. second or yeah, third, yeah. Or third yeah. too um and the interesting thing is for friendship or people connecting I know that we choose our friends and stuff but I feel like with Melissa and me, I really felt like God picked her for me because I'm a date person. Uh, September 11, 2000 first, uh, 2007 was my first day at church being a Christian and it's her birthday. That birthday. Oh, so that was God. really that weird. Was first mm -hmm. there, yeah. mm -hmm. That was like really weird. Um, in the beginning, she was my mentor, you know, I mean, just um, because, you know, like I said, I came from a broken place and I'm someone that has no family here, just mm -hmm. my two kids. Right you know and not knowing you know the church life or anything i mean when i used to look at the cross i always called it the small t because <laughs> that's how i mean it is a small t you know mm -hmm. um just our journey and melissa just guiding me and just um you know just through just through life and she's been there and my other girlfriends you know i did take our celebrate recovery here mm -hmm. i did even go to our um so a food brigade, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, got volunteered and mm -hmm. do that, you know, and just well, you got food at food brigade and yes. volunteered. Yes, we did that. Yeah, yes, we did that and to celebrate recovery for a long time. Um, and then once you worked through the cell recovery, you led yeah. yes. step studies. So it's been a journey of like foundation. You spent years building this strong foundation in Christ mm -hmm. after you became a believer, and then you were like, "Okay, now I'm going to give back. I'm going to yeah. lead this." Like it's it was in your heart and you're like hey I gotta take others on this journey so it's yeah, been fun. I love that because that yeah. is the journey. That's the that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, but I do feel like the ladies in the church, the connection that brought me where I am. Yeah. You know because I you know like being a Hindu, I did have a choice to walk away. You know just come do, get my food, do my celebrate recovery, mm -hmm. and walk away. But I feel like just the relationship of the ladies and the relationship and the love that I received from the church, yeah. that is what kind of made me, like I got baptized, you know, that kind of started my journey with Christ. So mm -hmm. can you, can you go back and read a little bit and, and just share how you found Westside? Cause I don't know if I know all of this. <laughs> Through a friend of mine, okay. I was her neighbor. Yeah. So that's oh. how, yeah. Uh, she said, let's go to church, you know, and she brought me, her name is Tony. And she, she had been me. coming. She was coming. Mm -hmm. Too. Yeah. yeah, I came with one of my friends for Easter or Christmas. I was one of those people. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, when we get the flyers, the Easter, Christmas, you know, just the typical ones that lots of people go to. But yeah, the when my journey started was one of my neighbors brought me here and that's when I was the bench warmer. Mm -hmm. Then everything started for me to be the front row and, you know, just, just keep plugging away. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like you were really intentional about plugging in with the right people who could support yeah. you to mm -hmm. help you through those times. Yes. So that you could get unstuck. Yes. Right? And yes. then move through um, to being able to actually serve. And I, I love watching you do this because um, when you lock into something, you lock into it pretty hard. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and I think that that's, I think that's awesome, <laughs> personally. But, um, okay, so we're to now, and it's like lots and lots of life has passed. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, speaking for myself, I guess, but you know. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of life has passed. Years. <laughs> what, what, from 2007, yeah, 2023, yeah. And now you're, um, you've locked into the idea of being a support and building community and equipping women. 
and mm -hmm. um, it's led to um, Ignite Women's Conference that um, we're like rebranding, I guess, and mm -hmm. relaunching this year. Mm -hmm. Will you tell? Will you talk a little bit about like where that came from and mm -hmm. how it's formed and your passion behind it? Yes. So of course it goes back to COVID. You know, so we were in Indonesia when COVID <laughs> happened. <laughs> we were doing ministry there. You know, so, so when we be clear so we have we our church supports a sex trafficked organization mm -hmm. in indonesia so that's why we're there yeah. so yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> so when we got on the plane it was silent there was no one on the road so it was creepy the airport so yeah yeah you guys came back the like day right of, when things were locking down everything shut down mm -hmm. if we would have left four hours later we wouldn't have been able to leave indonesia yeah. we right. barely got out of indonesia mm -hmm. to get home mm -hmm. So of course we went to our home. Um, Brian was the first one um, to have like the symptoms of COVID, you know, mm -hmm. coughing. So he was the first one that was diagnosed. And then of course I followed him. Um, the journey was not easy. Um, I can tell you, he was the 52nd person diagnosed in Oregon. Oh, wow. I was the 53rd because the COVID was so new. So the Oregon health, you know, they would check up on us and, and stuff like that. And the hospital didn't know what to do. You know because we were just so like i think we were like second patients at the hospital or something but i mean as we all know what COVID did to all of us but for me such an extrovert me being i was very sick for nine months mm -hmm. and i was very isolated um you know when brian had to be in the hospital i was by myself like i couldn't even have a friend come mm -mm. stay with me you know and then it was vice versa. Like if I had to pick him from the hospital or he had to pick me from the hospital, like there was no, like no one, you know, um, for me, I was lucky, you know, even though I say there was no one, but I was lucky where I had my friends, you know, we never went without eating a good meal. We never like said, oh, there's no food. I mean, the community, my friends, church, I mean, someone was there to pick up prescriptions. Someone was mm -hmm. there to give us breakfast, dinner. Someone was there just to come and hang out with me on the other side of the window. On the other side of the window. <laughs> we would go over to the house and they had like this bay window. And we'd be on one side and she'd be on the other. Yes, yeah, we would talk, you know. And, and that's what kept my spirit up, you know, kept my spirit up. For someone like me to kind of like feel that was so different because I've never been through something like that, you know, just, just learning. So, of course, nine months was crazy. After having, having my surgery... Um, I had to recover. So upon one of those days, I called one of my friend, Kelly. She's a leader also of the event. I said, we need to go to my friend Diana's house, who's also a leader. <laughs> and I came and she came and picked me up from Sherwood in my robe and drove me all the way to Diana's house, who lives, what, in Forest Grove? Forest Grove, yeah. Mm -hmm. So who lives in Forest Jeez. Grove. So um, we had pizza and just sitting in our, my robe, you know, in pain and just still hanging out with people. I needed that connection. I, I needed that after nine months. And somehow we were just talking about the journey, how everyone was supportive. And at the same time, my friends were, you were one of them. They were very protective of us too, you know, like, yes, go do that with her. Yes, take her food. I remember you saying that, you know, because I couldn't eat much. I was so sick. I was throwing up all the time. So that was another thing, like not only my friends were there to feed me, give me medication. But at the same time, they protected me from, from the world because we were so delicate. I know I was, you know? So just, we were just talking about what we can do to connect ladies, you know, because that's the first time I I knew I was connected, but I really experienced it. Really came to like, oh my God, like I like really feeling it, you know? So I went home, I had this thought of, doing an event in, we used to do an event called F, few years back, right? So that was just kind of, kind of in my mind. And I talked to Diana Kelly and then they said, great, but we had nothing. I've never led an event. <laughs> Diana Kelly strength this decoration. <laughs> right, you have a really pretty event, but I yeah. there. And there's no program. <laughs> um, yeah, there was nothing. So for me was, I just, trusted God, you know, like, okay, we have three, you know, they both said, yeah, it's a great idea. Let's jump on it. Okay. Okay. God, we, we have this idea. We don't have any money. We, we have, you know, we have nothing because I've never done this. Then I think it was just interesting. I remember mentioning it to Melissa, like, oh, I want to do this event. 
you know, and she said, I want to join your group. And when she said, I want to join your group, it's like, oh my God, God, you knew it. <laughs> because we needed her. She's done so many events. Yeah. And then I remember when I was running my ideas with you, you know, same thing happened. You said, I want to be in your group. And I feel like God knew I was ready to do that. And I know that that he brought you to at the right time because he knew I didn't have the tools. I just had an idea pretty much and two decorators. <laughs> so, you know, with Melissa coming that does so much and led so many events and with you being our IT person, the you know, in worship. So so I just felt like God said, Okay, Irene, I put this this vision, this in your heart. You want to do it. I know you have these two people, but um, but I'm gonna send you two more because you know that was like my best guess that you both said you wanted to you know so I feel like when when you have something a passion or something and and you don't know where to start which is my thing and I think God does help you he does bring the right person that fits in that moment you know so yeah so we built our team and then um from there we did our first event you know which was a success because it was right after COVID right mm -hmm. 2021 yeah so we did a lot of like trying to protect the lady, you know, trying to save hand sanitizers, <laughs> yeah. mask. Um, we even, I mean, the crazy part was when we were putting all these things together, we were talking about like what we want to do. You know, one thing I knew I didn't want to do like a two day event, mm -hmm. like the actual if is, yeah. you know, so I wanted to do one day event. Then, then I said, okay, we want to serve food. I think we started out from brunch, right? Then we went to lunch and then we, and uh, yeah, that's how it started. We said brunch, then we said no, doesn't work. Then we said lunch, then we said our food brigade serves from the church. And they take up the space until right. like one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. So we're like, okay, we can't start until two. So right. we're doing dinner. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I felt like God planned all that. Yeah. You know, like he kept like putting us and I think dinner was the best choice he brought for us. You know, and then with COVID, of course, the event happened. The other thing I loved that because of COVID, we didn't do like a buffet style. Yeah. We served. Yeah. And I remember so many ladies, even in the reviews, that you got emails that they love to be served. You know, yeah. they had never been served unless they go to a restaurant, like their mommies that always give food to their kids, you know. So after that, um, then last year, we decided to do it again. And we decided to serve the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> decided to serve the food. And then this year, um, I just felt like God from the beginning was kind of tugging my heart to, to make it ours. And because it was a different name, so it just tugging my heart, tugging my heart. And that's when I told the team that I want to change the name this year. <laughs> well, I kind of pulled away from the whole if thing mm -hmm. completely. Like, we're not going to use the curriculum yeah. this time around. And it's always great stuff. But I think that we felt we could go a different route and have more freedom with mm -hmm. our leadership and our style. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we kind of moved away. So we picked a name, and then we decided not to go with that name. And then we bounced over to another name, which is now Ignite. Ignite, yes. And Ignite, Ignite. is awesome. Gabe yeah, loves yes. it. It's a great name. So yes. I think that's going to be really fun. And it's Ignite Your Strength. Yeah, you know, because so this year we're talking about strength, strengths and yeah. connection, you know, um, so that's how Ignite came. And then, you know, just I, I wanted to, like Melissa said, we wanted to make it our own. So, you know, when you come there, you'll experience all of our personality. Yeah. You know, I said, it's our style. I said, it's Irene's style, you know, mm -hmm. because really it is. It's like, you know, your personality, Melissa, is mine. It's like, it's all together, you know, in different way. And it balances us, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how it came about. Um, the reason I wanted to do more this year as we're changing and you'll see lots of different things, you know, um, all of us are taking part in it. I wanted the ladies that come, you know, to, to feel that we, especially me, I'm not just saying this, that they're my connection. I walk through the journey from being Hindu to being broken, to being really sick, and then coming here, it's not like one day I said, oh, I want to do women's ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I really walk and, and experience that connection and that friendship, that love. A um, few months ago, I had a panic attack, and God left. For some reason, God did that while I was at church. In you the know, front row. In the front <laughs> row, exactly. And, and I remember sitting with Jessica. I, I don't remember what saying. I said, I'm not feeling well. Will you hold my hands, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, so she should hold my hands. And then I think a few minutes later, I said, I need to go sit down. I'm not feeling well, you know. Mm -hmm. 
then I know him. She brought me to the room, the family room, and I lay down on the sofa. From there, I don't really remember much. I, I really, I, I knew I was taken care of, you know, but I did end up going to the hospital. But at the hospital, what I have, what, what I experienced is that I wasn't alone. You know, Melissa was there, my friend Jenny was there, and you were there, you know, sitting with me in the waiting room. And I was still going through my whole panic, trying to breathe, you know, all those things. A um, few weeks later, I noticed that came in my mind that from hospital, how I came to my house, how the car came, how I had food, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to people. I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. No, that's what I was about to say. Like, Melissa, Jenny, you and Freda, you know, you guys all took care of me. And... And I'm very proud to say that, that God has blessed me with those ladies. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't have to worry about how I'm going to drive. I mean, I know a friend like a few weeks ago, she drove herself to the hospital and she drove herself back. Mm, yeah. And, and those are the reasons that I don't think that was okay, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that we all need that, you know. Like, I feel like God created women in such a way that we need that connection we I need agree. that friendship we're relational you know? but yeah. yes and you know That's talking real. and and just just doing stuff you know kind yeah. of thing doing life together mm -hmm. so yeah so not only my friends been there for me to have fun but they have been there for me on my brokenness and in my really worst time in my life mm -hmm. too so yes mm -hmm. good to have connections yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Melissa, I think that you're the pro when it comes to this. I feel like both Irene and I have come up under your your mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I know... And fun fact, Jessica's my boss now. <laughs> <laughs> it's super <laughs> weird. I'm not going to lie. And I'm leading an event with you, which I never... If someone told me 17 years ago that I would be leading an event with Melissa, yeah. like co-host, I would say, get out of here. Never, you know? You know what? Yeah, That's so crazy. Beautiful example of... And I think that, that, that this is like... A point that I want to make, and then I want to hear your expertise. Oh gosh! <laughs> and it is, it is that that um, that you gotta find people who are serving up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they're they're looking to build people up mm -hmm. to stand on their shoulders. And mm -hmm. I think that you mm -hmm. exemplify that to a T. I know so many people that you've really poured into and invested in. And I, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on. I like this is gonna sound like a weird question but how to do that and how to do it well you know what I mean and and, and how to to work with people as they're working through their stuff yeah. and love on them and that you're just like yeah I think you do it naturally oh. so I'll, I'd be curious to oh gosh it. that's <laughs> a loaded <laughs> question <laughs> you go. just so you know we don't get the questions beforehand so. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, conversation. No conversation. Um, I would say that part of it is discernment when you just God taps on your shoulder and says you need to connect with this person mm -hmm. because I, I naturally don't have mercy gifting which is kind of interesting so when I see somebody hurting I don't automatically connect with that I don't mm -hmm. see the hurt in people right away but I'm authentic in the in the way that I will approach anybody yeah mm -hmm. and so when I connect with people and I'm talking to them I'm just outgoing enough to ask a lot of questions and people tell me everything and it's the funniest thing yeah. on earth because i was i was somewhere the other day and gabe i was with gabe and i got in this conversation with this lady and she literally told me her entire life story <laughs> all well, i remember we were Poor in vegas it was, no we were in vegas for my birthday i remember what it was now. Oh. i'm laying out at the golden nugget i'm laying out in the sun chicks next to me and we just start chatting i'm like so where are you from blah 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 and i'm just asking all these questions you have family blah she tells me everything and gabe literally was like all are you kidding me right now? I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm exhausted from that whole like large conversation that she, and he goes, yeah, but everybody tells you everything. And I'm like, I don't know why he goes, I do. It's because you ask a lot of questions yeah. and you seem interested. Yeah. And I think that's the key. Yeah. There's a lot of times that like, you got to ask people questions like what's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. Where are you at? Like, tell me your story. I yeah. ask that one a lot. Um, do you have family, you know, um, is there hurt in your life right now? Are you struggling with something? How can I pray for you? Wow. 
and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And very then people questions. Yeah, yes. pretty direct. I mean, you have to have permission for that kind of stuff. Though. You can't just go I'll walk up to someone on the street and just do it. Yeah. But if they're if they're wanting yeah. to talk, they'll talk. Yeah. You know, I've had some people that are like, oh, I'm fine. And I'm like, yeah, I know you're not, but that's cool. Whatever. When you're ready to talk, well, they'll, they'll shoot me an email or a text during the week or a messenger. I'm like, well, thank you for checking in on me. And I have to be honest, this is what I'm going through. I'm like, yeah, I know. So <laughs> so part of it is just paying attention to people, like just watching them and not being afraid to ask questions and, and approach people. But I mean, honestly, you have to really be careful who you invest in because you can't invest in everybody because yeah. it's you don't have the bandwidth. And you've learned this more recently. <laughs> you don't have the bandwidth to connect intimately with everybody yeah so you really have to grab a few key people and you can be nice to everybody and you can influence everybody and you can give advice to everybody and uh connect with them and i do phone call conversations often i'll be on a walk and i'm like yeah i'm gonna go on a walk at three o'clock today we'll chat then and so i'll have a i'll have my earbuds in i'm outside exercising and i'll be having a conversation with somebody but it's like you can't do it with everybody especially mm -hmm. in our position because we are in ministry and a lot of people have a lot of needs and it's constant mm -hmm. and so so I really have to guard that so um, but to really 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 invest I have to see initiative yes. and so for me when I see you wanting it bad and you show up mm -hmm. then I will I will take a step toward you but if it. you want me but you're not willing to show up you're not willing to take initiative you're not willing then I'm kind of like mm, you don't want it like it's okay yeah. you, you're not there yet and so um and i have invested in some people that was honestly a big giant waste of time <laughs> and they ended up somewhere else doing stupid stuff making really bad choices and i was like well that was a bummer <laughs> well that's one thing never i know. love about you you're very um straightforward yeah mm -hmm. and, and you have to listen i mean my friendship with you didn't come easy <laughs> <laughs> well you were in a lot of trouble when we were connecting at first so you had a but, lot of discipline yes yes I, I agree no i agree uh there was one day i did something which i knew was totally wrong and i call her crying i did this i can't believe she goes you know better and then what did you say i'm jesus for forgiveness and then we moved on yeah. like like yeah. that that's right. like, that's what i right. love the about love. you yeah. yeah that's the love yeah. you know but you love people where they're at yeah. you can't expect them you can't expect them to be like the hyper leader, loving, I mean, just great in their life. If they're not there yet, if they're working through something, you got to walk them through it. Yeah. And hopefully the prayer is that they turn out like you guys, <laughs> where it's like, you know, you come in as single moms, all broken and hard, you know, just having a hard time. And then to see you take the initiative and just want it enough and that you love Jesus enough and you love the church enough and you want community enough that you're willing to just do that yeah. then that's when people want to invest in you mm -hmm. and that's when you realize someone like me realizes yeah that's not a waste of time right there that person's gonna like do something and change the world and at least change this community or change their circle mm -hmm. and help women and that's I think that's the hugest part is just picking those people but obviously being open to everybody mm -hmm. right you know so it's a it's a little dance yeah <laughs> it doesn't always work love wide yes <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> right I never, I never thought about that yeah. i mean i do that too you know but i never mm -hmm. thought about love wide yeah so, i mean because you got to be open to everybody you can't be accessible to everybody yeah mm -hmm. so i like want to serve and love on everybody and sunday is a great time because i'm I'm an extrovert, so I can bounce from person to person to person and have lots of conversations. <laughs> and if they want me to have a coffee date or conversation, I'm like, you need to text me or email mm -hmm. me because I'm not going to remember this because I'm mm -hmm. hitting 50 people this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but I try to really connect with everybody um, in a way that makes them feel loved and cared for. I give lots of hugs. I give lots of I loves you. I love mm -hmm. you. I give lots of I'm praying for you. And I'll write it down in my notes and I will put it in my journal. I actually will pray for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of shows that you care yeah and I think people know when you care you don't care so mm -hmm. just being authentic in that way and I'm a mess like I will just say what I say and I'll put my foot in my mouth and but I just say that's just who I am I'm working through it too I'm not perfect and I think that's attractive to people because mm -hmm. I think when we try to act yes. like we're so perfect we have it all together <laughs> they're like I could never like have a connection with you or be like you so I can't you know it's like no Unattainable. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a potty mouth Trust me. Wow. <laughs> we didn't know that, Jessica. You know, thank you for telling us. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I've heard a couple of things in this conversation about like that. I think that we can grab onto that really exemplify uh, healthy relationships mm -hmm. that that help you to grow mm -hmm. and um, love and um, 
uh, care mm -hmm. is what I hear a lot from you, mm -hmm. Irene. You have a mm -hmm. lot of people like caring for yes. you. Yeah. yeah, tangibly. Yeah, not just in words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I yeah. think like once, like Melissa said, once you narrow down that, it's very important to be very honest and black and white with those friends because it, you yeah. know, that's where the cloud starts coming, you know? So as women, I mean, I don't know, some women, I'm very open with all of my friends. Mm -hmm. One person asked me, who is your best friend? Like I have seven, seven of them. <laughs> and I said, she goes, who is your best friend? I said, I really don't have any from that seven. I go, they all are to me, like God made our body. One is my eyes, one is my ears, yeah. you know? That is how each of my friends are, like whatever, at different connections yeah like different yeah yeah so it's yeah. not like i'm giving everything to one person you know i mean just bringing and yeah. that's how and like i said the i think the biggest biggest thing for connection and friendship to once you narrow it down is being honest with your friends mm -hmm. you know and vulnerability open. vulnerability exactly. that's yeah. huge yes and exactly. i think as an extrovert you can have seven best friends yeah but that's I not how one. jessica yes. can have yes I jessica can be seven best friends she'd be seven, seven. Jessica. <laughs> like, no. you have a lot of good friends i yes. do but you have a best friend yes I yes, do. Yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knowing different people in yes. different ways it's all good it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. i love it um so love and care um vulnerability yeah Honesty. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honesty. Right. I like one of the things that I've learned, I think, probably from my friendship with you, Melissa, is the fact that I don't want people in my life who are just going to tell me what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want people who are going to be kind. Yeah. But truthful. Speak yes. the truth and yes. love. Yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. And those are the things that spur you on to move ahead and to, mm -hmm. to take the next step. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we just have people telling us, feeding us what we want to yep. hear. We're, we're, gonna we're never going to exactly. grow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think also just being okay with investing in people and helping people take their next step. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's part of ministry is mm -hmm. grabbing someone and saying, come on, you can do this. I see in you that you can do this. Yeah. And like, I, I'm going to help you yeah. with that and just pulling people with you yeah. into ministry because, you know, everybody wants to make an impact. Yeah. It's part of who we are. Yeah. So why not do it for Christ? Yeah. And, in, and in a community like this, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And and I think that it, I think that so often people separate ministry from life, but they're yeah. really the same thing. They should bleed together. Yeah. They really yeah. should. So when you're pulling people into ministry, you're just pulling them into life. My yeah. encouragement mm -hmm. to to the people that I invest in regularly at church, that process looks the same outside mm -hmm. of my relationships mm -hmm. with the church. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I want to love on. Like I want to look the same. I heard in the last podcast that we did for the West Side Weekly, I heard uh, Mike say that, like, my parents were the same inside yeah. of the church mm -hmm. and outside yeah. the church. We want to be like that, and our mm -hmm. relationships look the same. I agree, too, because, like, the, I have a trainer at the gym, and she is, um, she's my friend. Mm -hmm. Her name's Michelle, and she has a completely different lifestyle, lifestyle than I did. She was raised Catholic. She's married to a woman. She is, but she is a really good friend of mine, and we connect so deeply, and she tells me everything, and she asks me for prayer. And uh, we've gone out to breakfast and I've taken her coffee and we are connected. She's my friend. Yeah. And she has told me, I just, I like being with you. Yeah. You make me happy. You make me feel encouraged. Like I can do anything. Yeah. And we should be like that all the time yeah. to people. Like we should always, people should feel lighter after they spend time with us. You know how some yeah. people you feel heavier, like, oh yeah. man, that was exhausting. That was really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. I feel like people should come into our presence and we should just lift them yeah. and make them feel like they can do anything. Yeah. But I, just being the same with everybody is really, really important. Even if they don't look the same way as you, they don't yeah. act the same yeah. way as you, they have a different lifestyle than you, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like you connect with everybody through the love of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. love all. Just love, encouragement love. all the time. Yep, love, love all. Um, for me is sometimes, you know, like you said, people like veer away. For me, I agree on that. The other thing is like, you know, when you have something going on in your life, like my life went through a storm and I'm still in the middle of it, yeah. you know, and I have been asked like, how are you doing Ignite? What I have learned, I'm a strong believer and whatever storm I have going on right now, God's gonna take care of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to worry about that storm and like mm -hmm. not do the event. I know it would could have happened that way, you know, um, but for me is like, I have faith in God, I trust God, you know, I'm giving it, in his hand my life mm -hmm. he gave me a purpose to do this event and it's been successful so I'm gonna show love to them you know pour my connection or what I need to do 
because he got me mm-hmm. and that's what I've learned gotcha. like he got me you know and so yeah it's not like sitting in my life is perfect you know but it's yeah. just he got me and if you're a strong believer you really I don't know like how to say this English is my second language you know, that's like, true <laughs> what word I be looking for it like you know it's like people are like sometimes people when they go through a something the first thing they do is pull away from church mm-hmm. yes yes yeah. and we always say lean in don't lean out yes. and a lot of times when a hard time happens they like lean out because they're like oh i don't yes. know i Thank don't know you. if i want to deal but irene you've definitely leaned in yeah. during this difficult time yes. and you have a community to help you and you yes. know that yes. and you have christ as your solid yes. rock so that makes all the difference in the world yes. yeah so thank you yeah so cool i love it um i also just wanted to highlight one other thing and that is the fact that um, when you have sisters that grab hold of you and build you up and help you to move through those things, then it's your job to pay it forward. And you got to turn around. Yes. And when you get strong, you got to mm-hmm. be looking for your yeah. for your people. Who mm-hmm. are the people that that God is leading you to invest in and mm-hmm. to grow mm-hmm. and to to care for and to love? And it's messy. Very. Yes. It's not always clean. It's, gotta <laughs> be it's okay. messy. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be okay. You may be picking them up from the uh, jail cell, but yeah. it's messy sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this has been such a great conversation, you guys. Yes, I just... appreciate you so much. Um, I uh, I wouldn't be here. For, I wouldn't be here without you, Melissa, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's it's been such a like such an honor to grow mm-hmm. in friendship with you Irene I will love I love the extroverts in my life that pull me <laughs> out <laughs> pull me out to the tacos yes I do I do but but I agree I mean for me it's been you and Melissa you know so it's like we seen this chain effect, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, right, she was right. there for you, and you both are there for me. So who know? are we gonna grab now, ladies? Yes, I know. Yeah, be careful, careful what we're coming. Yeah. 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 We're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, that's like the whole relationship should be like, you yes. know, yeah. we like connect those chains kind of thing yeah. Yeah. and stuff I mean and I never saw you as an introvert maybe because I talk a lot I did the talking oh, for that's not true this is true <laughs> talk she talks enough for, for the both of you that's true that's true but you've known that I was an introvert you're like girl I haven't seen you in six months <laughs> where have you been <laughs> Hiding in my office, <laughs> doing podcasts. What? Where is this coming from? But it's fun. Yeah, but just uh, you know, just the ignite event. Like you know, I loved it. Like you know, Melissa saying, "I want to be a part of it," yeah. because that was like a big part for me. And then you, like of all things, you know, my interpret Jessica saying. I want to be, and and like I said, God puts it in your heart when yeah. the time is right. When mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you're introvert, extrovert, or whatever it is, I think He just connects all the dots. Yeah. Well, and, and, and we've got to step up too. And mm-hmm. as we see the ladies around us, like step into something new, and yeah. you know, we have to. Be we gotta, exactly. Yeah. We need to be there and support mm-hmm. each right. other. So, yes. well, join us. Yeah. Ignite. Ignite. October fourteenth, yes. two day thirty. Two to eight thirty, yes. dinner served, and we're gonna have a rocking party. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a dance party. We give gifts out. We oh, we have so much fun. We'll spoil you rotten. Join yes. us. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Bye, bye guys. <laughs>